Hey everybody, in this video, we're going to talk about the new changes that are coming to Trello with the update on the collaborator limits. So there's been a lot of questions about that and we're gonna talk you through it. Um, I'm Brittany Joyner, Trello expert, nerd, enthusiast, whatever, whatever you'd like to call me. I live and breathe Trello. I do all sorts of things with it. I literally wrote a book about it. So um, I love building things in Trello. I've also got Mike with me here. Mike, you wanna introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Mike. I'm uh, also a Trello nerd and Trello consultant, and I do the same thing, and I haven't been doing it as long, but uh, just as passionate and excited as Trello and uh, love building amazing new things in it. So, yeah, look forward to uh, talking about this change, which to me is a good thing, although I can see why it upsets a few people. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's, there's, there's no lack of opinions on it, and yeah, and I just, I, I honestly want to say something up front because I feel like, uh, you actually said this really well, Mike, I think in a community post, because I feel like sometimes I, I get this like, oh, you you always stand by Atlassian and Trello. And like, yeah, I am pretty diehard Trello and Atlassian and I want it to last a while um, forever, really. I know no product is perfect. Um, and there's definitely some things they do that frustrate me. But also I understand that like, I've worked in companies before. I know how it goes. There's never like one person that gets to make all these decisions. And so as a result, I'm not always very vocal when it's like oh you know i th th this was frustrated or not and mike i actually feel like you said it really well in the community the other day you responded to somebody's post and mentioned i'm happy to be critical of trello when i need to be but here's why i think this change is actually okay and obviously we're going to dive into it in this in this video but i just want to say we don't work for atlassian um they're not paying us to make this video or anything like that this is just two big fans and our candid thoughts um and what you need to know about it and what you can do about it uh so yeah, let's let's just start and like actually call out what we're talking about, which is this new change. Um, basically, I'm, I'm screen sharing here. This is the change is that there's an update on the collaborator limit for free Trello workspaces. And so basically what that means up until this point, if you have a free workspace in Trello, you can have you're limited on boards. You can only have 10 boards, but you could have as many collaborators as you want, which Collaborators is a new term. We'll come back to that. But basically, think people using your Trello boards. So you could have a board with literally a hundred, a thousand, I guess. I mean, people in it, and you know, there you can use that for free. Um, so what's going to be changing? And we'll go through the timeline here. But um, you basically will only be allowed to have ten people on that free plan. So anything I missed, Mike, with the like overall announcement of of what is changing or anything you think I should clarify there? Uh, just that it's. It's a, it's a change from the very, very generous unlimited offer that they have, and it's in line with the rest of the Atlassian product range. Yeah. And it's pretty comparable to all of the major competitors out there as well. So uh, they, they are making a change that removes the generosity that was there before, but it's still pretty decent. Yeah, absolutely. And Mike actually has a great graphic on this. Um, I'm going to see if I can find that and show that. Speaking of the, uh, do, 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 it, was, it was an article, wasn't it? Oh man, yeah, I'm probably not going to find it that way. Old. I'm going to include the graphic when I when I edit through this. I'll I'll throw it up on the screen so you can actually people who are watching you'll see it now. But um, basically that way you can kind of see how this compares to other tools because we'll we'll talk more about that in in a section. But it is definitely I'm glad you called that out. It's definitely in line with what we see with other tools. So. Um, the big thing I want to go through here is this timeline, because there's a lot of misconceptions that, oh, they're making this change, and April 8th, that's when I'm donezo, I lose everything. No, 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 fake news, fake news, fake news. Um, starting April 8th, you will just not be able to add more people if you're over that 10-person limit. And so, again, if you're like, I've got hundreds of people in my boards that have been using it for years, okay, as long as you're not adding anybody new, nothing happens to you after April 8th. And even if you do need to add new people, Trello is going to allow you the opportunity to get a new 30-day trial of premium. So um, even if you've done a trial before, you can reactivate it and basically get another 30-day grace period to sort these changes out, add more people, whatever you need to do. Uh, so that's April 8th. You want to talk about May 20th, Mike? Yeah, so May 20th is the, the date that if you have more than 10 collaborators in your uh, workspace, it will become view only until you bring it back down under the, the uh, collaborator limit of 10. Uh, so that, that is the, 
date that will change. And it, I think it's pretty much exactly 60 days from now. So in terms of timing, like they, they announced it several weeks ago. So there's been, yeah, roughly um, 90 days worth of notice uh, for this. Uh, so and it is being staged in a way that gives you the time to be able to do the right things. Absolutely. And and even, you know, like you said, with those nine, those 90 days, you still on May 20th can start that 30 day trial and give yourself another 30 days on top of that. So really, you've got about four months from when they announced it almost to to be able to deal with that. And we're going to talk through some different ways to sort of talk, you know, how how you need to deal with it. But let, let's go through some how it works and some common questions we've been seeing. There's 230 comments on this thread. So lots going on. First of all, let's talk through what is a collaborator. Um, so the easiest way to explain this is to not. <laughs> it's to just tell you to go to your workspace. <laughs> Uh, you go to your workspace, you know, go to Trello.com, you'll see all your different workspaces here, go to one and click members. And if you're like, what's workspace, we're going to come back to why a workspace has anything to do with this when we talk about pricing here in a second. But this is the number you need to look at right here. Uh, you're going to go to that page, like I said, your, your, your workspace and your members, and it's going to show you how many collaborators you have. But that, that's the number that if it's over 10, you're not allowed to do that in a free workspace, but there's ways to fix that, obviously. We're going to talk through some important things that relate to that, uh, because guests and workspace members, you can see 18 plus 2 adds up to 20. Um, but you only pay for workspace members and guests that are on multiple boards. So again, we're going to come back to that. That's a big part of like how folks can prepare. So we will talk more about that. Um, but this is this is how you see if you're like, how many people is this? This is this is going to be right here. And if you want to see, well, what would it cost me to upgrade? Um, let me go to actually another workspace. Let's go to, yeah, let's go to this one. So I've got this one. I go to members. I see I've got 15. Okay, I'm over. This is a free workspace. What do I need to do? I have guests. I've got one on a multi-board guest. Most of them are single board guests. I've got, oh, okay, here's what I can do. Um, if I go to workspace settings, upgrade workspace, it's going to help me estimate what that cost would be because I can see monthly or annual. I can toggle it. I can see standard premium, these different plans, scroll all the way down. And it's going to actually show you the formatting's a bit funny when you have like a long name like I do. But it's actually going to show you what it would cost you if you needed to do that. Um, and so, again, you know, looking at how many users you have. And again, annually has discounts on it. This is how you would be able to calculate what that's going to look like. So um, let's let's talk about pricing because I feel like that's a natural segue into this and something that confuses a lot of people. Uh, would you agree, Mike? I, I feel like I get more questions about Trello pricing than I do anything else. Yeah, I think so. And I think it's uh, a common misconception is that the pricing is associated to the user profile. Um, whereas the pricing is associated to the workspace. So the price is at a workspace level, but it's charged based on the number of people in the workspace. So that's Absolutely. the number of people active as workspace members or people who are multi-board guests. So people who are on more than one board. Um, if they're only on a single board um, and you pay for Trello, they're free. And it's one of the things that I've been telling clients for years to, to make the most of. And you can structure your workspace in a way that you can really limit the number of paid guests that you have. Um, and just focus on having the core people within your business or within your team that you pay for, which keeps, Absolutely. keeps the cost nice and light. Yeah, I, I was going to say, in that example I just showed, it was like $500 a year for standard. By restructuring things, I could literally get to a point where it's like $50 or $60 a year because I just have like myself as the only member and people are just part of no more than one board. So they're not like actually workspace members. They're just... Uh, single board guests and they're able to access things in there. And so, you know, don't be alarmed if you go to your upgrade page and you see something like 500 or a thousand dollars, cause it may not be that you may just need to restructure things. Yeah. Um, and Mike, there is I'm, one thing that, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I was going to say there's uh, there's one thing that doesn't, uh, doesn't get mentioned too much is that if you have single board guests and you try to add them to another board, Trello does actually provide a warning saying this is going to turn them into a multi-board guest and you'll be charged. So it, it won't do it automatically. It'll prompt you and say and ask you to okay it before actually... Right. Uh, it's not just going to charge you and add people in. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, one other thing I wanted to call out just real quick while we're on this pricing page. Um, keep in mind, I know everybody's like, I'm going to have to pay for Trello now, maybe in some cases. 
but there's a lot of cool things you get when you pay for Trello. Um, honestly, I've been paying for it since before I needed to, because I think Trello's had a very generous free plan for a long time. And I pay for it now for like my partner. Like I, I think if you believe in a tool and it solves problems for you, then it's worth paying for if you want it to stay around for a while. So anyway, so there's some cool perks you're going to get when you move to a premium plan. For instance, you're going to have those unlimited boards. You're going to have advanced checklists, which are the, the checklist where you can add a member and a due date to an item. And then people be able to view those. You're going to have custom fields. You're going to have more automation and all sorts of things you can do there. And then there's even more if you move up to premium because you're going to get the different board views um, and the workspace views, which is essential if you're trying to combine things from multiple boards into one view. So I just wanted to call that out as, you know, if you need to upgrade, it's not just like you're paying to get up to where you were. You're going to get a lot of new cool stuff with it, too. Yeah, including colored lists. Which yes, has just been yes, released. including colored lists. <laughs> yes, exactly. The new new feature out collapsible list. So, yeah. Lots you can do there. One last thing I want to say about pricing before we start talking about how we feel about all of this, there are discounts for education and nonprofits. And so if you are a teacher or a nonprofit and you're like, we've been using Trello and now it's going to cost us a million dollars, there are discounts of up to, I think, like 75%. So make sure to check those out and see what it would actually look like for you. You can apply for those. And I, I think I saw in one of the comments, it takes no more than like a couple weeks, maybe for like somebody to like get through that process and get it approved. So, um, so definitely check that out. And then, yeah, yeah, I'm going to stop the share for a moment now and kind of move into a, a quick little round of how do we feel about it? Um, Mike, do, do you want to start and kind of explain like, you are candid, Atlassian's not paying us to be here and say anything. What do we think about these changes? Yeah, I think I think because we answer questions in the community, people think we are um, Atlassian employees sometimes, and we're answering yeah. for them. But yeah, I my my obligation there is to the Trello users and the Trello community. So I will call them out when they do silly things. Um, but this, I, I I think is is pretty fair and reasonable. I understand that it's been left as it was for a long, long time. Um, but the change, if, if the change is what's needed to keep Trello alive and active and, and really flourishing in the next few years, I think it's the right thing to do. They haven't put up the pricing for uh, standard and premium for a long, long time. Whereas if you go to other, other tools, but certainly the newer ones, they're constantly adjusting their pricing, increasing their price and changing their pricing models. So hit, they're going to the, the free, free version and making some limits there really does bring the paid versions uh, like a, a real future and keeps them alive. And, and I'd also encourage people to look at the paid versions because they offer so much more than just uh, unlimited collaborators. Uh, there's so much more power and benefit you can get out of them. And, and lastly, this change, although it's going to cause problems for quite a few people, especially people who've got uh, setups already with you know tens or hundreds of uh, members involved, uh, the amount of support that's being offered for this is, is is pretty good. Like the community is really active. Like. Britt and I are constantly answering questions, but there's a few other people who are asking questions specific to Trello, and including the Atlassian team. They're like they're they're answering a lot of questions, and they're they're putting out um, documents and links to articles that will help guide you through this. So I think if you if you concentrate on looking at the Atlassian community and you have a problem, there's there's probably already a solution to it or a way around it. So you know, it's a really recommend that you go there. Absolutely, great recommendation. And honestly, I don't have too much more to add on to that. Uh, Trello has been very generous with their free plan, I think, for too long. So something had to go or Trello just wasn't going to exist for forever. And maybe this is a hot take, but like if, if you have more than 10 people using a tool and it's like an integral part of your workflow, then you probably should be paying for it, to be honest. Um, I mean, I think of things like Zapier and, you know, different tools that I pay for that it's like, yeah, it, it provides enough utility for me that it's it's worth it. And um, so, yeah, I do feel for nonprofits and folks who've been doing some like really powerful stuff with it um, for free and won't be able to continue in the way that they have. But honestly, that's really going to happen to any tool for forever or, or that that's free. It won't be free forever. So. Um, so, yeah. So now let's try to wrap up real quick with um, how folks can prepare. So I'll go back to sharing screen in case there's the actually I don't know that there's even really anything super big to share here, but um, a, a couple tips we have. Uh, first of all, the 30-day premium trial is coming in April, so use that. And again, you can wait until that May 20th date, or you can do it April 8th if you need to keep adding members, but definitely make sure to do that. Um, 
Uh, Mike, I think you added this one about spring cleaning your Trello boards and workspaces. Do you want to you want to talk through more of what what how do you have a process for that or, or like what you recommend doing there? Um, I think that the it comes hand in hand with the first day trial. So the first day trial gives you the grace period, and and when you go to premium. Uh, you get full admin control, so you've got a lot more ability yeah. to kind of clean boards, clean members out than you do with free. Uh, they are they are bringing out some new admin features for free, but we haven't quite we haven't seen them yet, so we don't know exactly what they're going to do. Um, but in premium, you have more control to be able to add and remove members add and remove boards. But yeah, it's it's all about um, and I created a graphic uh, for the community uh, just this week, was, and it was like an arrow from multi-board guests to single board guests. And so like, if you move them from A I'm to B- I'm gonna include that image in this video, you know, so through. yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. So, so it is a case of, if you can do that, and, and I spent a lot of time in the past, sort of, because I deal with companies who are kind of budget constrained sometimes, but they want the, the cool features. So I say to them, well, you get all the good features, including huge amounts of automation and, and the additional features for premium, but I can set it up in a way that benefits with automation and, and sets up, setting up boards that means that they only have to pay for like, four or five members, and then they've got 20 odd single board guests that get fed the information with automation. So you look at the structure and, and figure out how you can get people on single boards. Um, and I'll quickly just say one thing about single boards. Like people seem to think that has, has to be just one board that everyone goes onto, but it doesn't. It just means that for members in your workspace on one board, and it can be any board, they're not charged. Um, not They don't all have to be on the same, same one board. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Um, I'm going to offer a corollary to that, though, is that if you do want to try to keep more folks in boards, like if you're like, I like having separate boards because I, I, I like having, you know, my team board here, but I also like people have their own individual boards so they can just see their items. I get that a lot. I would recommend just have that team board that everybody's in and make sure you're utilizing filters. And so one of the standard benefits is you're going to be able to utilize save filters, but even if you don't use you know the official save filters i'm going to show you a trick let's say i have you know 20 people on this board for my marketing team but i just want to see my cards if you go to the filters you can do cards assigned to me even better shortcut i think it's just q if you press q it's going to only show cards assigned to you and if you notice when i apply that filter this url changes and so it says filter member brit joiner and then i can even add another filter i could say what is do in the next day or, you know, do in the next week. And again, notice that URL changes. I can bookmark that URL and I can say now, anytime I want to just see my cards do this week in this, in this whole board, I can come here and look how much cleaner that is compared to if I came to the board and was manually trying to find my things. So that's just my quick like 30 second tip about like filters and bookmark URL. So if you're worried about keeping more people in boards and people not having their own boards or needing to be in multiple boards to keep track of things, um, you may not be utilizing filters in the way that you you need to. So, um, and yeah, we, we, we talked about in pricing, but also don't forget standard is a thing. You don't have to upgrade to premium for this change. You could just upgrade to standard. It's $5 a user a month for, I think, if you sign up on the annual plan. Um, and so, yeah, so wrapping up, um, what, what do you think, what's next, Mike? What uh, I think you, you already mentioned it at one point, but I want you to mention it again because it's that important. What should people do? Yeah. Check out the Elastic Community Trello group because there's a lot of activity in there. And if you've got a question, I'm pretty sure with the 260 of responses to the article, that someone probably asked a very similar question already. Um, and if you use the search function on there as well, a lot of people go straight on there and start posting, and uh, and you can make use of the search function to find find some answers. You might get but, an answer quicker the, than waiting for someone to respond. Yeah. yeah. There's also the Absolutely. actual article that they published, which has got most of the art questions and answers from Atlassian people. Um, and also, we're still creating other content related to this. So um, check out on LinkedIn, follow Brit, follow me. Um, we're probably going to post some some short little clips and images and possibly links to other articles on the um, on the Atlassian community. So keep an eye out there if you want more information about this. Yeah, definitely do. And I'm going to include links to all of this. And also feel free to subscribe to, I have a weekly Trello newsletter that is all Trello all the time. And I'm including each week new stuff I'm coming across, new answers to questions, helping folks work through this and content like this. Um, and so, yeah, I just, I want to make sure folks have what they need. And um, it's a great way to get in touch with me and connect with me if you're wanting some some help with Trello. So thank you for watching and thank you for being here today. And Comment below if you have any questions or anything. And otherwise, we will see you in the Atlassian community. Yeah. Thank you, everyone.